Welcome. Welcome to Freedom Cast, where your hosts, Jordan and Miranda, show you how to get just a little bit more out of life. Are you ready to leave normal behind? Thank you all for tuning in to Freedom Cast today. We have two very special guests on our podcast episode, and it is Rob and Christy, who are both part of Archangel Inc., and we had a great time discussing with them their business and talking about their lifestyle, their history, and how Jordan is working with them now. So please just sit back and enjoy this episode. Hey there, Rob and Christy. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Uh, Miranda and I are very happy to have you guys, so we definitely appreciate you being here. We want to just first thank you for taking the time uh, out of your busy schedules to do this with us. We know that's not an easy thing to do, but we both appreciate it very much. Uh, We will get started here just by asking you a few questions. Uh, Rob, if you want to go first, that'd be great. Uh, If you could give us just a brief overview of who you are and how you know me, Uh, And if you would like to jump right into that, uh, you can do so right now. Cool. Awesome. Well, first off, thanks, Jordan and Miranda. Appreciate having the invitation here. I'm excited for you both. I think it's very cool that you're getting this podcast going, and I'm excited to see where you go with it. Uh, Yes, I'm happy to give a little overview of who I am and uh, how how we know you. I am the owner and co-founder of Archangel Inc., we are a publishing company uh, designed to make self-publishing easy and uh, professionalize the finished product so that authors and business people and entrepreneurs can focus on whatever it is that they do best and delegate the details and the messy stuff over to us and make sure that when they try to build their business with the written word, that we are able to provide that support infrastructure and network so that they are able to uh, not worry about it and uh, really focus on, on the rest of their brand building, focus on their marketing, focus on running their company or their writing enterprise as best as possible. We had the good fortune to get to know you, oh, it was probably a year and a half, a couple of years ago. I think you reached out to us for uh, for a book cover and um, had a really good time working on that with you. And I remember, Jordan, afterward, you reached out and said, hey, you know, if you're ever interested in um, uh, collaboration, if there's anything that you might be um, interested in working together on, please keep me in mind. And, uh, and we did. We both really liked your energy and uh, your uh, enthusiasm and the uh, sort of attitude that you, uh, that you showed. And um, we, we kind of bookmarked that. And then, oh, I guess maybe a year, uh, six months ago, something like that, uh, reached out and brought you on to help with some, uh, some technical work, some audio work. And uh, more recently, invited you to help with our marketing. I know that you really care about authors. I know that you're really interested in helping people share their story and figuring out uh, the ins and outs of uh, getting a book launched and, and finding an audience and finding a followership. And um, we're really, really happy and really grateful that you've been able to um, to be available and to help with that and kind of match up your interests and your passion and your experience with uh, a need that we have that a lot of our clients have expressed. So we appreciate all of that. And um, I'll let Christy answer uh, on her end. Yeah. So basically ditto what Rob said. (laughs) Uh, No, I remember when uh, you reached out, Jordan. Well, first of all, who am I? I am Christy. I am the publishing coordinator at Archangel Inc. uh, Slash Rob's kind of shadow right hand, I guess, maybe sometimes. So yeah, I love, I love doing this. I kind of fell into it actually. Um, But I remember Jordan, you reached out for the cover for the action diet, I believe. Do I have that right? And um, loved working with you on that cover. Um, I remember telling Rob, actually, I'm pretty sure at that time you were like my favorite client and (laughs) that I wanted like 10 more of you. (laughs) So uh, you made a really good impression on us. And, and uh, just to say, you know, from repeating everything else, no, whenever the the opportunity came when we were, uh, we really recognized you know, that we had a need for uh, for some book launch, marketing, coaching type stuff that, that people were really needing more of a, a hands-on kind of a step-by-step coach almost to kind of help them through that. 
and you f were just like an instant fit. I just knew it was going to be perfect. I hope that you feel the same way because I think it's been working out great. And um, I know that the clients love you and I think you're doing a really great job. So I was really glad that, that it was a good fit for everybody. Yeah, Jordan has been loving the marketing stuff. Yay! He really has enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> that's so awesome. And we get to t we and we get to meet Miranda now too, so that's exciting. <laughs> and what better way than over a podcast? Right? <laughs> well, thanks guys for that. Uh, I was trying not to blush as uh, you I was listening to all of that. So, I uh, appreciate the kind words there. <laughs> <laughs> he was fishing for that. <laughs> How can I make myself look good in the first 10 minutes? No. <laughs> great, great, seemingly innocuous question. Well done. You have a great podcasting career ahead of you. <laughs> well, that was not my intent, but I do appreciate you guys saying that nonetheless. Um, so th thanks again, um, you know, for, for talking about that. We appreciate that. Uh, I do remember sending that email uh, originally. I don't even remember when exactly it was. I think it's maybe a couple of years ago. Um, I know it was just kind of on a whim. It was kind of like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to put myself out there. Uh, I'm just going to see, I'm going to see what they say. Um, I was worried at the time that it was possibly a little bit inappropriate to ask you if you were hiring in a way. Um, I don't think I said that exactly, but that's kind of what it, uh, what it boiled down to. But, uh, I think it was just, um, um, well, you know, now I'm not even sure, you know, what I'm saying. I think I'm just still smiling a little bit too much from what you guys said so i can appreciate that <laughs> well i'm really glad that you did <laughs> and i know rob is too. <laughs> absolutely yeah, i i uh appreciate it i mean we we do occasionally get uh emails of that sort communication of that sort from folks saying hey are you uh interested in in uh bringing on some additional help and what do you have in mind and uh there was there was a good intuitive fit and again i mentioned uh, as i mentioned earlier really liked your energy really liked the way that you uh, approached it and you were very gracious when we said hey you know we'll certainly keep you in mind don't know anything um at the moment that that we have a good fit for but um but it worked out really well and we're grateful grateful that you did so uh lesson out there for podcast listeners uh, it's a good idea if you can to you know graciously humbly uh, open-heartedly reach out to people that you uh, that you enjoy working with or that you uh, enjoy the company of or respect or you know have some sort of professional relationship with and say hey listen I would love to help um, offer value offer something of service and um, you never know what's going to happen you don't necessarily you don't necessarily have a um, a hundred percent success rate, but you don't need it either. You know, you send out sincere, thoughtful messages to, you know, five, 10, 20, a hundred people that you really legitimately have a connection to. And, uh, there's a good chance that at one or two or a handful or more of those people will respond and you might develop a, um, an actual relationship with them. I'll mention as well, that was one of the things that was the precipitating factor for me, uh, working with Matt, who is the co-founder of Archangel Inc. Matt at the time had a podcast, or excuse me, he did have a podcast as well, but he had a website, 180 Degree Health, and I was really interested in health and nutrition and uh, sort of understanding uh, a lot of the, the dietary information out there, and I really liked what he had to say, and I appreciated reading him, and so I reached out, and I said, hey, Matt, I just want to let you know I'm a recent reader to your site, but, um, but I enjoy it. I think your content is really good. I think it's really... Smart and informed, and you've you're widely read, and you have a unique and insightful approach to a lot of these issues. And uh, just want to say I appreciate it, and I'll you know look forward to uh, commenting on the on the website and following along. And he responded very graciously, you know, multiple paragraphs, and said, "Hey, thanks." And you know, we got to know each other a little bit. Fast forward several years later, uh, I was brought on to work with him on 180 Degree Health expanded his uh, field or his uh, business into the uh, digital e-reader and print-on-demand paperback and audiobook production fields. And eventually, we founded Archangel Inc. Uh, on the basis of that work together. After we realized that we could do that for him, we realized we could do that for other people. And so consequently, we, uh, we did. We started offering that service. We expanded the team, and the team has continued to expand over time, bringing on really great and uh, uh, capable and amazing, talented uh, staff members. And um, so you never know. You never know where things are going to go. So podcast listeners out there, 
if you are an aspiring entrepreneur, if you are somebody who's just interesting and cur interested and curious about the world, uh, there's no harm in reaching out. The worst that happens is people never respond. Uh, the best that happens is you might develop a relationship and maybe you build a business from it. So good lesson and uh, good example in, in what Jordan has done. Well, thanks for that, Rob. Uh, it definitely wasn't something I did expecting any immediate results. I think that's a good note for podcast listeners that a lot of these things um, you know, that you're doing aren't going to, you're not going to get results right away. Um, it just kind of, it takes that, it takes that time, but it really was just my attempt to get out there, um, you know, cause you never know what might happen. You really don't. And then it turned out that, you know, even after a year of sending that email to you guys, um, just a few months before Miranda and I were getting ready to leave our jobs. Uh, that the whole marketing thing worked out. So the timing was great. Uh, I love it when that stuff works out and the timing works out. Um, you know, just because I sent that email, um, you know, so long ago and then it finally came around just at the right time. So super cool when that stuff happens and it just kind of works out. Yeah, it all happened very organically. And then the timing was absolutely perfect. I think that's when you know things are really a good fit. And it's really kind of a a destiny, if you will, or a meant to be thing, you know, very serendipitous. And it's, uh, oh, look, this is just uh, the red carpet is just rolling out so easily today. <laughs> yeah, Christy, totally agree. Thanks for that. Well, uh, that leads us into our next question. Uh, and Rob, you actually kind of started um, going over this a little bit already, but we just wanted to know how Archangel Inc. got its start. Uh, I know you co-founded it with Matt, but if you just wanted to give a little bit more about that, you know, and, and of course, uh, if you want to throw anything else in as well, um, you know, anything else you might want to share about Archangel Inc., uh, that would be perfect. So shoot. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So uh, in January, we'll be an official, um, well, we'll be, we'll be four years old uh, officially in January, although it's existed, Archangel Inc. as a company in an earlier iteration for about another year and a half before that. So we're coming up on the half decade mark, um, I would say. And we started off. Oh gosh, I think it was, man, uh, it must have been 2012, somewhere there about. We um, maybe, I was coming back from overseas. I had done a number of different things. I traveled, I had some different jobs over the years. And um, Matt reached out and he said, Hey, listen, I need somebody to help uh, take over 180 degree health, not take over, but, but help maintain it. He was planning to do some travel himself. And, you know, I knew the site. We had a relationship together. He trusted me. And so I did that. In the course of that time, we started off uh, expanding into those other markets, as I mentioned a moment ago. And and then we started, he sort of just had this idea. He's like, hey, listen, why don't we do this? Why don't we do this for other people? And um, we did. Fortunately for us, he had a number of contacts in the health and wellness and fitness arena uh, who were some of our earliest clients. Uh, Matt is also a great networker and reached out to Steve Scott, who is um, an amazingly successful, talented, capable self-publishing author. He writes in the habit development and, and personal development arena, and um, was was gracious enough. We said, "Hey, listen, let's can we can we do some work for you? Um, and if it's worth your your while, you can pay us, um, and this will help us kind of help you expand into new markets." I think the first thing we did was. Um, an audiobook and a paperback edition of Kindle books. He had only had Kindle books to that to that point, and um, so we did that and kind of just continued to expand from there. Um, yeah, and and as mentioned, I think it's been it'll be four years that we've been an existing LLC in the state of Florida um, in January, but we were um, we were around I want to say early 2013 or thereabout. Yeah. Cool, man. And yeah, that made me think of a story when you mentioned uh, Steve Scott, you know, because Steve, Steve Scott is very big in the, um, you know, publishing and self-publishing world. But and I don't know if Miranda remembers this or not, but um, one day while we were in um, our church or relatively, you know, medium sized church, our, our pastor gets up uh, on stage and, you know, all of a sudden he's talking about this habit stacking book and he he brings it off the, the pulpit and um, shows us uh, Steve Scott's paperback version of the the habit stacking book, and I thought that was that was so cool to see, you know, to to see that because I I hadn't heard you know other people talk about um, you know Steve Scott in everyday language. It was just kind of cool to see it you know up there and you know in front of a big crowd. We, there, there he is. There, awesome. There's his book. 
Yep, and you you can uh, you can let your pastor know that um, that the folks that you work with produced the paperback edition for him um, way back when, and I think the audio edition. I'm pretty sure he did, we did both of those at that time. So, thumbs up, nice uh, uh, nice serendipity. All right, next question is for you, Christy. Uh, you said you kind of fell into Archangel Inc. Um, we just wanted to know if that was uh, you know if that was serendipitous or did you really just fall into it and just start working there one day. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I was actually friends with Matt as well um, on Facebook. He and I kind of had more of a connection through uh, some of the dieting stuff, but also through unschooling because I'm an unschooling mom. I've been unschooling my 12-year-old since he was, he had like six months of kindergarten and that was it. So uh, he's getting ready to be 12 now, so a long time. (laughs) And I know that Matt and his girlfriend at the time, they were... um, you know, experimenting with some homeschooling or unschooling with um, his, uh, with her daughter. So anyway, that's how we had, we were friends, you know, in that way. And I was going through a divorce at the time. And uh, my intention was, it was kind of an abrupt thing. And my intention was to, once I got back to Oklahoma, because I was in Texas, was to reach out to Matt and ask him, as I knew he knew of ways to make money online. (laughs) And so here I was coming from a marriage where I hadn't had I had quit my career several years earlier, and so I was going to be faced with going back into the working world, but I didn't really want to put my child into public school all of a sudden. I didn't want our lifestyle to change that drastically, and so I uh, had plans to reach out to Matt and just kind of ask him, you know, what ideas he may have or if he could point me in the direction, and he was like, oh, hey, by the way, let me introduce you to Rob, <laughs> and uh, Rob was great. Like, I think we hit it off pretty much immediately. I kind of just started out doing ebook formatting. Um, and then, but the company at that time, I think was about six months in, uh, because that was in like June of what, what was that Rob 2013 or 2014? I don't even remember. Um, I think it was, I think it was 2013. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, I kind of started out just doing the book formatting and then it just kind of evolved to more of just the coordinating and taking care of the inquiries. And it's just kind of, you know, over time expanded into more and more in that way. Um, but yeah, so it was, I never even had to look for a job. It was totally, I, I totally feel like it was divine timing. Um, I never even, I basically came back to Oklahoma, started working with, with Rob, um, and the Archangel Inc. team and it's all just kind of went from there. So I was very grateful. I still am. I love, I love what I do. (laughs) So, and I love all our team. I just, I'm really happy. I haven't, um, I like a lot of things about, you know, working from home. Um, but I'm also still, I'm, I'm a Capricorn. So I kind of have this need for, um, an office type structure in a way. So I'm very organized. I have like pencils and notebooks and like all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so it's kind of funny because I have a little bit of a mix going on. But yeah, so that's, how I, that's how I became part of the team was a uh, match <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. Thanks for that. Uh, and yeah, Christy, your positive energy was one of the main reasons I, you know, ultimately, you know, initially reached out to you guys um, about, you know, potentially working for you, um, you know, because it was from that very first email that I got from you that I felt like I really mattered as a customer, you know, and I really felt comfortable um, right away. And I felt like you guys just really wanted me and my book to succeed, um, when, you know, which is the whole thing, right? You know, authors helping authors. That's what you guys are about. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> Yeah, I was sold on you guys right away. You know, as a first time author, I was totally overwhelmed, um, you know, because there's so much information out there when you're trying to figure out, okay, I got to get a book cover. I got to write my book description. I got to get all this stuff together. Man, like I wish I could have just written the book and been done with it. But no, there's a lot more to it. Uh, But you guys were able to help me out pretty much right away. Um, You know, and that was just, you know, that was just awesome because I immediately felt comfortable, you know, and I was happy to get my first cover um, from you. you know, for the action diet. And that just kind of all worked out. And you, you know, you definitely made me feel um, good, um, you know, good as I was trying to navigate through all of that. Right. I still love that, that cover. (laughs) Of course, there's both of your covers I really like, but that first one, I still love that cover. Yeah. One of the things that I really appreciated, uh, just to, to plug you as well, a little bit, Jordan, I remember, I think the context for you reaching out and saying, Hey, um, you know, let me know if there's anything you have in mind that we might be able to collaborate on was you had created a very long and detailed post outlining your whole production process, the whole writing process, the outlining process, um, the various timetables that you use, how long it took for certain aspects of the publishing process to go through. And I just remember thinking, this is really 
uh, systematic. This is very intentional, very deliberate. And I believe you've rebooted it for, for your new site and you know added some updated information. But I thought that was so uh, useful and so helpful for first-time authors. And that was a big part of, I think, why we got a sense that the, the marketing work would be really good for you because you've been there. You've gone through that process. You have um, really tried to systematize it and uh, organize it and make it coherent and logical and sequential so that somebody else who is just uh, floating in chaos and, you know, hey, they have this book and there are a thousand and one different options and directions I can go in, um, they can see that guideline and say, okay, now I know this is this should happen um, now because it's going to take X number of weeks for this part to play out. And if I want to release on such and such time, the there's I should have this, you know, a week from, you know, the start of that and so forth. It was just very, very um, coherent and and constructive. So um, kudos on creating that and being as systematic and, and intentional and deliberate as you've been. Yeah, it was like taking all this chaos and just streamlining it into a bullet point. Okay, here's step one, you know, so that people could feel like, oh, okay, here, I at least have some sort of a game plan that I can look at from somebody who's done this before. Well, it's cool that you guys shared that because, I mean, I did not remember that at all. I had no idea that was what started the conversation. So that's pretty neat. Um, but yeah, the theme of this podcast episode for me, it's definitely been that serendipity. I think we've each said it a, a few times, but just because I, I didn't build that post for any outreach purposes, you know, and I honestly didn't even remember sharing that with you guys, um, you know, but going back to back to Rob's suggestion about, you know, never knowing what ripple effects, um, you know, your past actions can have for your future career. Um, that was huge because, I mean, that's what's kind of landed us here, um, you know, now, you know, I was just trying to provide value for people, you know, and it got me to the point of eventually knowing you guys better and then um, working into this, you know, so it's so cool. You know, and I read all online all the time about, you know, providing value to people, you know, and seeing, you know, it's just cool to see um, that, you know, even quite a while later after I wrote that post, um, it's kind of coming back to me, you know, and it makes me feel like it's truly worth it. You know, and this is, of course, you know, an important lesson for our listeners as well, because um, if you keep working and you keep on on striving for that, you know, uh, eventually it'll it'll come back to you, you know, probably tenfold. Yeah, sure. There's always people listening and there's always people watching, even if they don't let you know so. One of the uh, piggybacking on that, one of the ideas that I really like that I came across somewhere or other, but it's the idea of the, um, you know, the five year overnight success or the 10 year overnight success, uh, uh, which is to say overnight successes are often uh, predicated on long periods of work that you don't necessarily know what's going to happen uh, as a result of there. You may be like you said, just trying to, to produce good content and put stuff out there that hopefully is useful. You may not even have any sense that people are looking at it or reading it, but at some point, if you keep plugging away, um, you know, this happens very, very commonly for people who do find some, some measure of success. Um, they'll reach a tipping point where all of the stuff that they had done before, all of that backloaded energy will roll over and um, suddenly everybody wants to know about them. Somebody suddenly everybody's in the market for their services and for what they're producing. And the fact that they have that, you know, five or 10 year back catalog of quality material um, just adds to their credibility and their prestige and uh, the ability for people to connect with them and feel like, yeah, this person is legit. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a, um, it's a frequent refrain persistence really is valuable and um, you know, putting out good material that you feel proud of and you know hopefully that that um, other people may benefit from uh, may not always be evident at first that it's it's making an impact but um, if you stick with it it may become um, evident over time yeah trust the process <laughs> absolutely yeah that's that's absolutely great guys yeah it has me feeling good about the work uh, i'm doing and building my new website um you know since it can be hard to get any meaningful results right away sometimes that can get frustrating because you're not seeing a lot of visitors, you're not seeing a lot of traffic, you're not seeing a lot of anything uh, in the beginning. But I guess that's often the case because things are not going to happen overnight. Um, you know, if you're building the business or, you know, pretty much whatever, it's not going to happen. Um, you know, it's not going to happen just overnight. So I really like what you guys added there. Yeah. And it's kind of like, you know, Gary Vee talks about that a lot. Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, in a lot of his videos is, you know, you 
he's always talked about how he's not, he's not that overnight success. You know, he's been building a foundation and how, you know, Rob and I have talked about that a lot with, you know, with Archangel Inc. And as we've grown and how we want to change and grow and evolve this company. And, um, you know, we're not trying to be that, uh, make a million dollars overnight company. (laughs) You know, we're trying to build a company that has a foundation that's going to last and that we enjoy and that our clients enjoy and that everybody is having a good experience. And, um, you know, so yeah, I think that's a, another good point is to realize that, you know, kind of building that foundation, um, it can take time, but it's really worth it because then you're there for the long haul. Um, it's not like this, you know, get rich quick kind of thing that's going to fall apart in a week or a year. Exactly. Well, you guys are definitely on to something with Archangel Inc., um, which leads us right into our next question. Um, it, what are some long-term and short-term goals for Archangel Inc.? Cool. Chrissy, would you like to jump in or shall I? Go ahead. I was going to let you take that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's a good question. I think it's important to set set goals and have a vision. One of the folks I've been paying attention to a lot recently is uh, Jordan Peterson, and he has a program called the Self Authoring Suite. And uh, one of them is the Future Authoring Suite. And one of the things he says is, you know, if you don't uh, if you don't at least have a general sense of where you're going, um, there's a good chance you're not going to get there. Um, so thinking about it and articulating it and figuring it out is pretty helpful. Um, I would say for Archangel Inc., the uh, the short-term goals are to uh, continue really streamlining our, um, our process, making it as efficient and as effective as possible. Um, I think that we've identified a, a clientele that is probably well-suited for what, we, what we're interested in or what we're capable of, um, and that is you know, professionals, entrepreneurs, and folks who are uh, who have a little bit of means, some capital to invest, and who really want to build their business and, and grow their brand through publishing. Uh, we have a book that's just come out, and I will, um, I will plug it. It's called The uh, Published Professional. And the subtitle, I, <laughs> I wish I remember. I always get it a little bit mixed up. But, um, but it's something like, you know, how self-publishing can help build your brand, attract more clients, and increase sales, something to that effect. That's exactly it. Perfect. Perfect. Well, good. My memory was not as not as uh, erratic as I thought. Um, and so, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to helping people in precisely that position to do that because there are, you know, literally millions of small business owners uh, in the country and in the world, uh, people who have stories to tell, who have passions and uh, uh, exciting things that they're up to that can help them stand out, differentiate them from the crowd. I mean, even if you're doing something as, uh, you know, let's say, um, I don't know, non, uh, non-sexy non as, you know, installing uh, installing windows or doors, you know, you can talk about how you got into that. You can talk about why it is that you run the business the way that you do, and you can use that to help you acquire new customers. In many cases, that is going to be something that will help you stand out. And so, uh, continuing to do that and uh, identify those people, figure out where those people are um, in the you know medium to long term. I'd like to um, again just get to a point where we're doing really really high quality work and we're able to really comfortably um, and effectively help people find the success that they're looking for and um, you know be at a at a place where we all can have um, a healthy work life balance for you know, for me, for Christy, for everybody else in the team, where we're able to do uh, as much work as we want and feel really um, well compensated for it because we are providing such tremendous value and uh, be able to, yeah, put their energy, put all of our energy into precisely the projects that we feel really called to and inspired to. So that's sort of the direction that I see Archangel Inc. moving in. We'll see, uh, you know, I mean, things are always subject to change. Uh, it may it may turn out that, you know, our target demographic and the folks that we are really effective uh, working with are in a, uh, in a different uh, arena, in a different niche. I mean, one of the things, for example, Christy and I have discussed is we really like to do cookbooks. Now, I don't know if there are, you know, enough cookbook authors out there who, uh, you know, we can become, you know, a cookbook focused company for, but maybe that's you know maybe that's something that uh, that we discover you know maybe we we land another um, couple of cookbook clients and then suddenly tap into a network of you know independent authors who are are looking to produce that sort of material 
and that's the direction that we go in. Um, what we've tried to do is build a robust and talented and flexible and adaptive team so that we are able to pivot as necessary and um, take advantage of you know the needs that people come to us expressing. I mean, that's partly why we brought you on, Jordan. One of the consistent questions and concerns that people would have was, hey, you know, you guys can produce a really good book, but um, what if I don't sell any copies? I don't really know what to do. And, you know, we had a handful of resources and we tried to provide some guidance and some support for that, but we didn't have the sort of uh, custom coaching and um, and consultation and, and handholding through that process that we do now. And uh, we realized, yeah, that's that's a value. So at some point we may realize that there are certain things that we are are doing that people especially need or that we're not yet doing that people especially need. And we may put some energy and focus on those so that we can really serve, serve people. I mean, I just, I like, I like good communication. I like good storytelling. I like helping people articulate and identify what's really moving them and inspiring them and uh, calling them. And so if we can continue doing that and helping them through that, do that through the written word, um, all the better. That's the that's the goal of Archangel Inc. As I see it. Yeah, Rob, that that's awesome. Uh, sounds like you guys definitely have a plan there. Uh, Christy, do you have anything to add? Yeah, no, I think he really hit it on the head. That's why I wanted him to answer because he said it so much better than I could. But no, I think I definitely agree. I think we've done we've been in business long enough now. And uh, whenever I started doing the majority of the coordinating, when you know Matt kind of started moving into other areas and had his own stuff going on, and so. Um, I just, I tried a lot of different ways of doing things uh, to try to kind of find the way that works best for the client and for our team and, and gets the work done efficiently, but not, you know, not with a bunch of errors. You know, we want to do really quality work. And I think in the beginning we were getting a lot of just people just were really in a hurry. They really didn't want to spend a lot. It was more like here, just kind of slap this up on Amazon and let's get it done. And I kind of learned pretty quickly. That was not my favorite kind of clients to work with. Um, and I think Rob definitely agreed, you know, we really want people who care as much about their product as we do. And so just really refining our process to where it was a really good fit for the kind of clients that we want to attract and bring in and work with. And so I think we've, we've done that really well, especially over the last year. And so just, yeah, I can kind of continue to just, you know, fine tune that experience. Um, part of bringing you on as well was to, to kind of <laughs> not to, to give you, to help you be, for you to be able to help them with all of those questions when it comes to like the launch and marketing, because a lot of that was kind of getting fielded to Rob and I, which made it a little bit difficult to have time to give everybody the time that they, that they deserve. And so for me, I really wanted to have it a little bit more compartmentalized um, so that I could give these people everything that they needed and that they were paying us for, you know, to be able to take time and answering these questions and not be in a rush and not feel like, you know, uh, we have so many projects going and so many emails and trying to hurry just so that you get a reply to them. You know, like I really want to be able to give good service. That's number one to me. Um, I've trained in customer service in my past lives and I've, it's just, it's, it's super important to me that people really feel, um, the genuine experience because, and that's why I was really glad to hear how, how you felt about the first email that you got from us. And that's what kind of attracted you because, um, I love people. I connect with people pretty easily and, and I really do enjoy and I become a little bit um, self-interested into their projects. You know, like, uh, you know, Jordan, you know, we have a client, a client right now that we're working with. His name is Dan. I'm sure he won't mind me mentioning his first name on here. But, um, you know, I, I had a phone chat with him today about his project. And I was like, man, when this is done, I'm going to miss you, brother. <laughs> you know, like, like we really get close to our clients for the most part. And I'm not everybody wants that kind of relationship. And that's okay. Uh, you know, I never force myself on anyone. And if they if they don't have time for those more personal, um, you know, types of relationships while they're working with someone, that's totally understandable. I mean, we're, we we keep it professional, but we also are friendly and we just want people to feel comfortable. So um, I think for the short term goal, like you said, just refining that, making sure that we are, um, if there's any other areas that we can improve in, that we're doing that. And then long term, definitely, I think having a consistent uh, having just the consistent business coming in and and really being able to give the clients that we have uh, the time and attention that we want to give to them. So that's that's how I feel about it. 
Yeah, I think you guys do an awesome job. I have kind of a different perspective because I hear everything kind of filtered through Jordan. And I just remember him being so excited to show me the cover, going through that process originally. And um, Jordan's very honest if he thinks the service isn't good. So definitely hearing positive things from him means that he definitely thinks it's a good service. Right, right. No, I'm, and that's so much of why I thought he was such a good fit. And and as a matter of fact, I, I'll be honest, I even bragged about you today, Jordan, to Rob. I was like, um, in an email, you know, we were kind of talking about one of the projects and I said, Jordan has just, you know, I'm getting such good feedback and, and I can tell just by talking to you and our little conversations that we have on the side about these projects that are going on that I, I trust you fully. Like I don't ever send somebody to you and then feel like I need to like check up or, you know, I, I'm completely busy over here in my own part of what's going on, trying to take care of everything. And I know that I can trust you with them and that you're going to take really good care of them. And, and that's really important. I think that was really important to Rob and I is that we wanted to know that whoever we um, used and whoever we took on, you know, for that position that, that we could really trust them to, to care about our clients as much as we do and take care of them and treat them right. So, so thank you for doing that. <laughs> no, Christy, that's not a problem. I'm, you know, I'm glad to do it. Uh, and you guys did make it clear from the beginning that you wanted someone who you could trust. And, you know, t so you and Rob could kind of have your hands off it for the most part, um, you know, especially since that person, which is me, would be dealing directly with the client and, you know, emailing them and talking to them back and forth. So, but I'm happy to do it because it wasn't that long ago that I was in a similar situation, you know, just being overwhelmed by self-publishing in general. Um, you know, so the whole thing has been a lot of fun so far for me, you know, and then of course, like it led to this, um, you know, this podcast happening and that's pretty awesome. I'm really glad it happened because a lot of times my family will, um, ask, you know, what's Jordan doing now? And so this podcast is kind of, um, a perfect way I can just say, listen to the podcast, then you'll find out. Yeah. Yeah. You've been great, Jordan. Honestly, like I couldn't be happier to have you on. It's, it's also helped me a lot because, like I said, a lot of those questions, um, you know, because I'm the, the the main primary point of contact for everybody throughout the whole process. I am that one person that, um, you know, for the most part is replying to all the emails for all the projects and all the inquiries and then dealing also with, you know, going between the team members to make sure everything is um, is coordinating, you know, a, a, according to plan and that we don't end up, you know, with backups in the pipeline and things like that. And, and that we're hitting those target, you know, launch dates and stuff. And, <clears throat> and so it would be kind of difficult sometimes when, um, you know, it almost would require a very extensive email <laughs> to go over. I mean, you know how involved launch and marketing is. And so, uh, Rob and I were just, we were really kind of struggling with, with how best to serve people because we kind of, for a while, we were just like, you know, we don't really handle that part. We just basically, we're going to get you launch ready, but go find somebody else to do your launch. And I just, it just didn't feel right to do that. I mean, we were doing it for a little while just because we didn't really know what else to do for a minute. And so we, we kept having different talks and about, you know, which way to go and, I was like, you know, I think we can do this. It was almost down to where I was going to do it myself. <laughs> but to be honest, I didn't want to. <laughs> so I, and that's what I told Rob. I was like, you know what, Jordan, Jordan is the perfect person. I was like, let's get Jordan. And he was like, you know what? I think you're right. Let's do it. And so it was just probably one of my favorite days, <laughs> but not just because I didn't want to handle that part. It was, I just wasn't my thing. I knew that I wasn't the best person for it. And I didn't feel like it was fair, you know, to the client to do that. I mean, I could have definitely taught myself a lot, but I felt like it just wasn't going to be the best for them. So again, it just, it worked out exactly the way it was supposed to. And I don't think it could have been a more perfect fit. So I'm really, I'm really grateful to have you on board for many, many reasons. <laughs> well, you guys made my day. I guess we can just end the podcast right there. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, we do have a few more questions, but uh, definitely appreciate you guys. I'm very happy to be part of the team and, uh, and of course, working on that stuff with you. But anyways, we'll just ask a few more questions here to, to finish, out our sh finish out our show. But we were just wondering, uh, for both of you guys, and, um, you know, just wondering about working non-traditional hours and how you organize things, uh, you know, with your roles with Archangel Inc. Uh, we ask because, mainly because that's our heart for the show to share that there's a lot more beyond just a, just traditional nine to five uh, hours and, and jobs out there. There's a lot more uh, out there that people can seek uh, beyond just having to go to a job, you know, just because, you know, that's what they always thought. And and I shared um, in a lot of my blog and in prior podcasts that I didn't really 
um, get out of that mode of thinking until I was about 25 and kind of was opened up to more of the online business world. And now, of course, there's a lot more than just online business world. Um, but it's just maybe if you just want to talk more about, um, you know, getting beyond just that traditional job and then, you know, how you kind of work your hours um, from there. And Rob, if you want to start, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. So I've had a, oh, uh, I guess a series of, of uh, hybrid jobs, both non-traditional and traditional over the last decade or so. Um, at various stages, taking on jobs to um, help, uh, you know, fund what I what I want to do. And, uh, you know, I figured out, or for myself anyway, probably around that time, shortly after after college, that I was not really interested in a, um, you know, an office job or, or a, a lifelong nine to five kind of deal. I worked for, uh, for my college afterward, I went to NYU and, and worked there for about a year, year and a half, and uh, was fortunate enough to uh, pay off uh, my student loans. I didn't have a whole bunch, and so I had some some freedom that um, you know other people may not have access to. But I worked, consequently, as a uh, 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 farm farm assistant. Uh, I worked. I did some woofing. If anybody out there is familiar with it, it's uh, willing workers on organic farms. And so basically you do little farm shares and learn organic farming, usually in exchange for uh, about half time work. Um, and you get uh, one skills and experience, but also um, room and board typically with that. Uh, so I did that for, for some time. I worked at a permaculture homestead in, um, in Indiana. Uh, I've worked on a vegetable CSA. Um, I yeah, traveled around a good bit, went overseas. I worked as an innkeeper, uh, which was a seasonal job. You know, I worked there for about six months and then um, traveled overseas for a couple of months to, in that case, to Southeast Asia. Um, you know, I've driven across the country a couple of times and, you know, I've had a lot of good, good experiences. One of the things that I've realized is for me, it's really helpful to, to modulate my expenses. Um, I can live pretty frugally, pretty thriftily, and, um, you know, in a fairly low cost, low, um, uh, low overhead sort of way. And, um, and I think that's really effective in realizing what agency that, um, that I have. And, and for folks out there listening, you know, what agency you have, you know, how many of the, um, the bills that you have, how many of the obligations that you have are not exactly requisite, you know, how many could you get yourself out from under if you wanted to, if you in fact realize that you value your time and autonomy and scheduling um, independence, you know more than the um, the dollars that you would be bringing in. Now, how I ended up getting into entrepreneurship and building this business and uh, all of that. One, I was working with Matt, and Matt had um, a number of years of experience making money online, and I was I was interested in that, and you know had that opportunity working with him um, to uh, to get a taste of that. And so what I would say to folks these days who are looking for that sort of um, independence for, you know, escaping that sort of nine to five life is you have a couple of different prongs that you could approach it from. And ideally, you would approach it from both. And one is, as I mentioned, um, lowering your expenses, you know, keeping the, the outflow uh, reduced so that you actually don't need as much to, to live comfortably and to live on your own terms as you'd like. Um, the opposite, opposite one is to is to bring in more income, is to create value for people. And so um, there are, you know, a million different ways to do that. It's, it's a really, uh, it's an important question. It's not, not one that's exactly easy to answer for, uh, for folks out there. I know I still, you know, uh, struggle even when talking to other colleagues, other people in related industries, like, okay, what can I do that's actually going to be, be valuable, you know, that's going to have some utility and use for people on the market so that they would be willing to support me so that I can in turn make their lives better, you know, provide a solution to their problems. Um, and that's tricky, you know, you may not figure that out for a while. But, um, but one thing that you can think about in order to do that is what problems, what challenges, what struggles do you personally have that you uh, have been able to figure out a solution for? And if you do that, um, then there's a good chance that other people will be in a similar position. So for example, I, I just read recently the story, I forget the, uh, the person's name, but the, pers the individual who founded Scrivener, he was, um, Scrivener, by the way, for anyone who is not familiar with it, is a uh, publishing 
uh, application, uh, writing application. It helps you storyboard ideas, create outlines, um, do some layout. And you know, I'm not personally familiar with it, although I know a number of our authors have used it. But um, he developed this program because he needed it for himself. He was in the midst of writing a very long um, book, and there was no program out there that quite had everything that he wanted, where he was able to consolidate research to, again, storyboard ideas, to build outlines. And um, and so he eventually created Scrivener, not really expecting that it would be something that is marketable on its own or that other people would be interested in. But as it turns out, there was a lot of interest and a lot of value in it. And, you know, that's his primary business now. He's expanded it, you know, into multiple different platforms and, you know, they have applications and, you know, I'm sure they have lots of uh, support and, um, you know, they do a lot for it to maintain it. But um, think about uh, that highlights that idea. Think about what you can do um, to create a solution uh, to something that you've struggled with, because chances are you are not the only one. Other people are out there looking for that. And once you um, once you have that and, and really do it well, really work on perfecting it, um, you may have some lead into a way to um, get out of the rat race to not just go and collect a paycheck, but actually be able to see the fruits of your labor, you know, be able to um, expand in ways that are consistent with your own um, values that are consistent with your own desires and needs. You know, there are some people out there, for example, who have who have businesses, and they know exactly how much they need to, uh, to get by. And, and they're going to uh, do that. And um, they are going to be completely independent. Otherwise, um, I mean, you know, one brick and mortar example, um, I forget where it was. I think there was in, uh, in Brooklyn, there's a, a pizza shop, really good pizza shop. And the guy makes only so many um, uh, pies every day. You know, he knows that he has to sell, I'm going to make up a number, you know, 500 pies a day. And uh, once he sold 500 pies, you know, that's enough to cover his expenses. And that's it. And so people will get there, you know, and they'll want to order the 501st pie and they'll say, nah, sorry, you're going to have to come back tomorrow. And, um, you know, and you may decide that that's, that's important to you. You value um, your, your independence and your time and your autonomy um, more and you figure out exactly what you need to get by and, um, and then you're going to do it. But, um, you know, other people, they really like the game of, of being successful. You know, a lot of people, I hear this metaphor used a lot. It's like it's like a real life video game. You know, when you're uh, building a business, and obviously the stakes are a little bit higher. There are real dollars. There are real um, individuals that are being affected. But it's still the same sort of mindset, the same uh, approach, the same thinking that goes along with. Okay, well, how can I how can I level up? How can I do the next most challenging thing to be effective here? So that's a long and cir- circuitous answer. But, um, you know, I think that it speaks to how you can, how you can conceptualize working a, a non-traditional job and figuring out, you know, if it's for you and, and what are some of the pros and, you know, and cons of it. Um, you know, you, yeah, there are, there are a million different ways to, um, to make it work. And, um, you know, if you think laterally and, um, and creatively, you may discover some that kind of speak to you. Well, yeah, that was great, Rob. You know, I was listening the whole time and taking a lot of my own notes. So uh, totally cool on the long answer. We're totally fine with that on this show. Um, so, you know, that was some great advice. You know, and I was going to ask you this, um, you and Christy, this next question, but you kind of already answered it. So, Christy, if you're cool with it, I'll just ask you um, you know, if you can answer this one question. Um, you know, we're looking for just one piece of advice for our listeners that just want a little bit. Uh, more out of life. So if you're ready, um, you know, that'd be awesome if you could help us out with that one. Ooh. Um, <clears throat> I would say put fear in its place, which is really no place at all. <laughs> uh, trust your intuition. I talk about that a lot. Rob can vouch for that. I think on every conversation he and I have, intuition gets brought up at some point or another. <laughs> and I uh, just don't overanalyze it. You know, don't overanalyze life. I'm guilty of doing that. I know a lot. So that's advice I give because I'm giving it to myself a lot. Um, <clears throat> I would just say practicing. I mean, this is just life in general, not business related. Well, I mean, it can tie into business as well, but just, you know, practicing self-development, choosing happiness as much as you can, because, you know, it's easy to get wrapped up in life and uh, the not so silver linings sometimes. I know <laughs> Rob and I think both had that kind of a week this week, but um, 
but we always bounce back pretty quickly. And uh, <clears throat> that's why I'm really glad, you know, Rob's a good friend of mine. He's, you know, not only my quote unquote boss, but um, I really consider him to be a good friend. And that's another thing I love about working for him so much is because I, it never has felt like a job to me ever. I, I have a quite a history of working for large corporations. I worked for Southwestern Bell. I've worked for City Financial, Citibank. Um, I worked for the third largest medical billing company and did ER credentialing for physicians groups. And I want no part of that life ever again. <laughs> so uh, I, I love not only having the freedom of working from home because I am a single mother and I do homeschool my son. And so obviously I have a lot of life going on outside of it, but it, I wake up every day and even if it is a quote unquote stressful day, it still never will ever feel, has never felt anything even close to the days that I had when I worked for those corporations where I, I almost hated my life. Like I would get up in the morning and dread, absolutely dread going in. And at some of those jobs, I made really good money and it just, it didn't matter. I was miserable. So, you know, I would say you know, find your bliss and follow it. <laughs> There's my advice. <laughs> yeah. And I definitely had the same, you know, similar experience with Rob and, you know, cause he initially asked me to do some audio work, um, you know, for you guys back beginning of right around the beginning of this year, maybe a little later, you know, maybe about six months ago. Um, you know, I, I went and told him, I said, Hey, I don't have any experience, but I'd, I'd love to learn. And he was real cool about, well, okay, that's fine. I'll teach you. Uh, you know, and he took the time just to train me and, you know, to do that for me, which was really cool. You know, even though I'm like, I was helping him with some audio work, it really felt like he was doing it for me, um, you know, on my end, because I was getting the training and getting some additional work. And that was really cool. But, um, and that's a, that's another good note for our listeners and just about, you know, um, getting out there and not being, a, not being af afraid to fail, you know, as well. Cause, you know, I definitely, messed up some things in the first couple audio projects, but it was fine. It worked out, you know, so, um, just not being afraid to fail and just keep picking yourself up uh, after that can be, you know, very important. I think genuine effort goes a long way, a long way. <laughs> well, we should probably wrap it up pretty soon, but this has been a great conversation with you guys. I know Miranda and I have very much enjoyed it. Um, so if you, if one of you, maybe Rob, if you just want to give a brief overview uh, where people can find you, you know, if they're interested in getting a book cover or want to know like a little bit more about self-publishing and how you guys might be able to help them. Uh, I'll link to Archangel Inc. in the show notes. Um, but if you want to just give a brief uh, spiel here too, you know, about where someone can find you and how they can connect with you, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I can do that. So you can find us at archangelinc.com. That's I-N-K because we're so clever. It's uh, like a pen and inkwell and not uh, incorporated. Uh, archangelink.com. You can also find us on Facebook. We're fairly active there, facebook.com slash archangelink publishing. And we have a new website coming out sometime soon, maybe by the time this podcast was released, if not sometime shortly thereafter, which we're very excited about. And uh, we are uh, available to, uh, to chat with. We offer a free 30-minute uh, consultation to anybody, even if you are not sure that you want to work with us, even if you know for sure that you don't want to work with us, but you have some questions about self-publishing and want to get a little bit of feedback or uh, some uh, ideas or just have a sounding board to bounce some things off of and, and ask for some resources, we'd be very happy to chat. Uh, we have a free self-publishing series, which you can find on our website. And that is a good six email over, uh, yeah, series uh, overview of the self-publishing experience talks a little bit about us and the sort of folks that we really like working with, um, but also gives you some free uh, and low-cost low resources to learn more about self-publishing and figure out if it's right for you. So lots of opportunity to, to reach out to us. We really like hearing from folks, uh, so please definitely feel free to, uh, to contact us through any of those means. We'd love to chat more, share some information, and uh, if there's a good fit, if there's something that we can do that would make your life as an author, as a professional, uh, easier, simpler, more successful, more enjoyable, we would love to do that. Awesome. Well, thanks, Rob, for that. Uh, and thanks again, Rob and Christy, for uh, you know taking your time to come on the show. Uh, we very much appreciated having you here um, and doing this with us. So thank you. Nice to hear your voice. Thank you. Thank you all for, um, well, thank you both for the, the invitation. Chrissy, great to chat with you as well. Thanks for participating in this. And uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks again. Good luck. Uh, good luck with the podcast. I will keep an ear on it and I'm excited to see where it goes. 
it's been great. Honestly, I enjoyed it a lot. All right, you guys have a good night. It was it was great having you on. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening uh, to the end of this episode. Thanks again to Rob and Christy for being willing to spend some of their time and tell us a little bit more about Archangel Inc. and kind of explain um, more about what I'm doing with them and uh, their whole self-publishing gig. So thanks again to them. Thank you for listening to the end. If you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful, please, please, please go to iTunes and leave us a review. Um, we would very much appreciate it. All right. I uh, hope to catch you next time. Stay weird. Stay weird, friends.